Hello everybody, my name is Silvia and this is the sixth episode of uh, Be Aware Not Scared, which is uh, an awareness campaign that we are running, uh, trying to get in touch with our IIT international network in order to, to check on them and see how they have been impacted in their work and uh, their lives by the COVID-19 pandemic that we are living through. And today we're here with two IIT alumni uh, they both did their PhD in the IIT Center of Naples, and uh, they are Chiara Fedele, a postdoc researcher in the group of smart photonic materials at the Tampere University in Finland, um, where she's been living for uh, almost three years now, and uh, uh, Francesco Del Giudice, who is lecturer in engineering um, at the Swansea University in Wales uh, in the UK. Um, also, there's Marco Monga with us, IIT HR director. And uh, I don't know if Mark wants to begin with a question for um, either Chiara or Francesco. Thank you, Silvia. Hi, everybody. Uh, today we have uh, an absolute beginner because we, this is the first time we have somebody from uh, Finland. So, uh, so I start, uh, I, I would like to start with Chiara because uh, she can tell us about uh, the situation in uh, Northern Europe. Uh, and then we can also have some uh, update from Francesco because we already had some uh, guests uh, from UK and uh, so we can understand if uh, the situation in uh, some way is going on or not. Uh, please Chiara, tell us about uh, Finland because uh, at least uh, uh, talking about me, I have not so much information about the situation in Finland now. Yeah, sure. Hi, and thank you for the introduction. Um, like mm, here in Finland, actually, the situation of and since we're uh, in a in a country here where um, there are like uh, the number of, of of people is like way lower than in Italy, then the situation is a little bit different, and uh, also the the way that the the government is uh, is handling the situation is quite different. So be actually an interesting interesting perspective probably to discuss from uh, from these three countries um so i'm i'm living here like uh, it's already almost three years and i've been a postdoctoral researcher as Silvia said here and mostly i'm an experimental researcher so for me actually the start with, like from, since the beginning of this outbreak has been uh, a big change of my uh routine uh, work routine so we uh, have been moving to uh work from home from uh, um from the mid like mid March, so it's already a couple of weeks that we are, uh, well, sorry, a couple of months uh, that we are. No, um, we will be until the mid May uh, working from home now because the uh, the university premises are closed, so we cannot access the uh, offices, labs. Uh, but outside the university, basically the life is uh, is a little bit different than from Italy, for example, because we can still go out. We can still, uh, um, I mean, we are. Um, are applying some forms of social distancing, so we are um, we're not meeting other people as much as possible. We are like staying uh, as far as possible from other people at supermarkets, for instance. We have this uh, 1.5 to 2 meters distance uh, that we try to apply uh, in every situation. So it's like it's a, it's changed a little bit, but for us from university, probably has been like uh, the biggest change since uh, the university was closed in uh, in uh, mid March. So it was like the biggest biggest change. And and actually like the number of um of cases of COVID cases are actually not, not that not that big if you compare to other countries like Italy for example. But of course it's also a matter of number of uh, of people in, living in Finland and the density of population is like really really low. So uh for instance here the biggest um like the, the most um like, the biggest number of cases has been around the Helsinki area, of course. Uh, so I live in Tampere, that is like a couple of hours north from Helsinki. So here we have, uh, we are still like a very manageable situation, I would say. So we're far from uh, from uh, what we've heard from other countries, uh, luckily. I mean, we're lucky. And of course, being so far from our families and friends in Italy hasn't been very, very nice. So, but, but uh, I mean, still they're, they're all fine. So. At the same time, we are we're quite uh, relieved that the situation is going to, to approach yeah. to an end, at least. Yeah, no, just a question, like a curiosity yeah. about this. So, uh, since you have been there three years, I was curious. So, have you seen 
an increase like in social interaction outside work because of COVID-19. So since you have to work from home, so you have to experience like a sort of more restrained lockdown inside the wall. Have you seen like that the society is instead interacting more outside compared to previous year? Or is like the same or is decreased because of COVID-19? Well, actually, like uh, Finnish uh, society is uh, has its own, uh, I mean, it's its own identity. So the, um, let's say that I've seen, from my perspective as an Italian, I've seen a different type of interaction with other people, a lot of use of, uh, um, well, not social media, but it's like um, um, video video calls and uh, the way of, of being like, closer to people in a way. Even though I've been far, for instance, from from uh, my family and friends in Italy these three years, I've used more these, uh, these platforms, for instance. Whereas the rest of the society, I've seen implementing very interesting ways of socializing, like people um, like going out together, but being far away from each other and just, you mm. know, just shouting uh, words from one side to the other or something like that where um, Finnish people enjoy a lot being outside uh, so in the nature generally like as a um, society so um, they are probably using that even more in the sense that they are they um, are forcing themselves to have uh, you know breaks from work uh, going to the woods going to the lakes and uh, trying to, you know, break from uh, from uh, the, the news and uh, the worrying and all this stuff, like by being more in contact with nature, actually. So this is what I've noticed. That's interesting. Okay. What about you? What's the situation there? Uh, well, in UK, like the situation is uh, sort of in between, like the full lockdown in Italy and uh, like the partial lockdown that you're experiencing in Finland, let's say. But uh, so here, uh, I mean, I, I'm a lecturer, as um, Marco was telling at the, at the beginning, and Silvia were telling at the, at the beginning of this conversation. And the lecturer means like a sort of assistant professor. So it means that I have like teaching and research duties. So in terms of outside, I, I mean, in terms of work, we also have been experiencing working from home since like the last five to six weeks. I probably lost count of that. But we received communication like from the morning to the afternoon. I still remember that I was telling my students, so guys, uh, this Friday, we are going to finish lecture. So I rescheduled our next week lecture for tomorrow. And halfway through the lecture, uh, students raised his hand and say, hey, by the way, we just received an email. We are in lockdown. Everything has been canceled. Say, uh, OK, see you, see you somewhere. Like, I, I have just to cut it short, like on, uh, on the day. And um, so everything was like, was locked down. So the university is not closed, but it's in uh, hibernation. It's in hibernation, meaning that you can access lab and office, assuming that you have a very strong, valid course. And for course, uh, we, uh, we mean uh, helping like to sort out the COVID um, uh, challenge, like the COVID pandemic. So we have several groups at uni that are work currently working, converted their 3D printing lab to print uh, some uh, uh, PPE uh, equipment for NHS because there's a shortage of this. Uh, we had several collaboration with industries in order to deliver like uh, hand gel, hand sanitizer because there's been a short of that as well. But now the, most of cons uh, the main concern is like masks. Uh, by myself instead, I'm trying to liaise with other companies to uh, write a project to try to address uh, diagnostic for COVID-19. So this is what we are trying to do so is ongoing. And these are the, mainly the only reason that you can actually access labs if you really have a valid reason. Outside work instead, the situation is, uh, you know, halfway, we are in lockdown. But here people are allowed to go out for, a, like for exercise or for a walk or for, uh, like, you know, cycling. And uh, I mean... The, the regulation is not very clear, but it should be like roughly 30 to 60 minutes that you can uh, that you can go around. And uh, so this is like uh, a bit for us. It's quite it's a bit manageable. I mean, you really appreciate when uh, I mean we're in UK, so this is not a stereotype that the weather is bad. But when the lockdown start and you see the sun outside, then you feel bad because say it is not possible. Like for five weeks of lockdown, we had five weeks of sun. So today it started to rain. Just after five weeks, it was, it was impressive. Never seen something like that. But people are, are managing. So at least for in the area where I live, 
but there is more uh, important societal issues that uh, other scientists are, um, and politicians are actually um, uh, addressing, which is like um, health, uh, mental health, and mental well-being problems for people in lockdown, as well as an increase in uh, domestic violence. So here is very difficult to try to find out for politicians the trade-off between when to, you know, safety in terms of, uh, uh, of like being inside, inside the house uh, to prevent pandemic versus like damages for uh, people inside, uh, inside the house. But for us social, like we have been doing a lot of Zoom meeting. We organize like with uh, our um, uh, chemical and environmental engineering portfolios. We have a weekly... Um, cocktail we call it a weekly cocktail where uh, we had a team every uh, every week so we started with the local beers then we went for uh, uh, wine and cheese then gin and tonic so every week there is something different so it's like another way to catch up with uh, with other people so and we have seen a lot of this going on quizzes so like really the community at least like this once university community is moving a lot to try to manage this situation, so also for uh, social interaction. Can you can you hear me? Um, yeah, yeah. We'll say, I, I actually have a question for uh, for both of you because uh, I recently heard uh, another IIT alumna who who actually had a workshop approved in August, and she was wondering whether she would be able to to actually travel because everything is uh, unsure at this moment. So. Uh, for the, the, the work that you do, what has been the, and what do you think is going to be the impact of uh, this restriction on traveling uh, around Europe as researchers? Kara, you want to go ahead? Uh, yeah, yeah. I've recently got cancelled, like a cancellation, received a cancellation from a conference in May that can be served as a, uh, let's say, as an example. Um, yeah, I mean, these kind of meetings, of course, have been, have been canceled and moved sometimes. So, um, yeah, this, of course, it's a, it's, it's has changed a little bit the, the routine from the routine to all the other interactions, for instance, because also collaborations within in, uh, other groups that we have have been blown down, of course, because um, in each country there is a different situation, different access to the labs. So um, this is, of course, as a, has had its own influence. Uh, so for instance, if I can add up to what Francesco was saying before, uh, we are now, like it's already a couple of weeks that we are implementing uh, some shifts into the lab. So trying to go towards, uh, like, let's say, a different normality, uh, where we can, uh, we now don't need any more to have, well, we need a motivation, but it doesn't have to be strict as long as we can have uh, one shift where, where we are, um, in one lab and uh, we have to ask for permission to enter the labs uh, one week ahead, something like that. But uh, it's, it's going to be uh, like easier and easier to access the labs now. And, and this for sure will, uh, will, will, will help in, in continuation of the work. Of course, like I, I didn't have anything else planned, like any, any other travel planned uh, other than this conference, but I, I, I think that it will, will like, has influenced a lot uh, researchers. Uh, in UK, the situation is not better. Uh, all the travel have been banned, at least from university, yeah. from a university point of view. So basically, if you decide to go for uh, a meeting or whatever, you cannot claim uh, reimbursement. You cannot claim back the money for to reimburse because, it, it, I mean, you, you basically can do it uh, like nationally. But you cannot claim the money back from uh, like grant code, uh, etc. So you have to go by your own pocket. Uh, while international travel is currently banned entirely, so you cannot leave because I mean there are uh, special restrictions uh, here in UK at the, the I mean you know at the broad level, and so university has just taken the approach to you know like say to, don't go. Uh, similarly, we have um, I mean I experienced a cancellation of a conference. I was supposed to go to a conference in April that has been postponed to next year. Uh, I was supposed to hear regarding like another uh, appointment, but that also has been postponed like next year. A conference that was originally scheduled in Rio de Janeiro in August has been postponed to December in the hope that they will be able to deliver it. So, I, and uh, the situation is like, I mean, you understand that the situation is critical for travel when uh, 
you, you, you realize that the, in the moment that the UK uh, say that it was in lockdown, they suspended all the exams at, uh, uh, at like a high school level. So the GCSC that here are, uh, are everything. So while in Italy, you can basically, you know, you just get the exam and then you can decide where to go to uni. In some cases, there are uh, entry tests and that's it. In the UK, it's the other way around. It's uh, like university that invites students. So students have to apply and they have to get like invitation and approval and invitation letter from uh, university. And all this thing or everything is based on uh, the GCSC, that is like our national final year exam uh, results. So if they do not get those results, basically all the access to uni is, is kind of a tricky. So they have to address that. And uh, you understand that the situation is, is very is very bad when they cancel all these exams. Similarly for our university and across the UK has been like a sort of the same thing all over. All the exams have been cancelled. So all the exams, uh, the June, May and August receipt section have been cancelled and everything has been, uh, we, we had to rethink our way to access uh, our students. So it has been like quite a challenge. So I really do not, I cannot foresee any uh, like large freedom of moving in the following uh, in the following weeks the only way that this thing can be sorted out and people are really working hard on this is to basically to try to test as many people as possible so if the people a person tests a negative to covid then he will be allowed to travel and same things when coming back you need to test negative to be able to go back but there is currently a restraint in terms of uh, how uh, they are managing like the, the tests. So the main government promised 100,000 tests per day, but we are not there yet. So now it is started to go just for NHS stuff. So for, sorry, NHS means the national health uh, system. So it's uh, the um, uh, healthcare system, uh, national one. So basically, there's still many people working, many NHS staff working in close proximity to people with COVID-19. They could not be tested. So they wanted to be tested. They could not be tested because there were not enough tests, in particular of a reagent, to actually try to make a diagnosis for COVID-19. So that would sort of problem. I think that we, that August is still too early, but probably September, October, we are going to see something out of it and the heat should do its job in terms that the virus should be less uh, prone to spread in uh, like in uh, in a hot environment yeah in fact also in Italy we are thinking about the the end of lockdown uh, and probably the summer time will help uh, at least to enlarge it a bit uh, the current safety rules but uh, I don't know if uh, you have in mind when in your country is, is expected uh, to, to end the lockdown in, in Finland and in UK. Uh, do you have some kind of ideas about the impact you, we have to face in terms of safety rules that you have to, for the long term, I mean, you have to respect in the next future because for, so for sure we have to think about social distancing, uh, uh, shifts uh, for work and so on. I mean, a lot of uh, new rules that we have to set up and uh, and uh, and uh, expect in the next future. Do you have uh, any kind of idea about your research activities, mainly not uh, uh, not in general terms about your life? Yes. So, uh, in terms of research activity, uh, basically, what uh, Probably like on May the 7th, we're going to have another meeting at university uh, based on what the prime minister will decide like at the beginning of May uh, to start to, uh, you know, lose a bit the lockdown measurements and the hibernation at university. So the face-to-face -face teaching will be still banned. For research instead, uh, there will probably be some, uh, you know, uh, I wouldn't call it sign-up sheets, but... I would rather say that there should be like some project that really need to go forward because many staff are employed under grant hood. So yeah, the problem is that if you, if there is a limitation and uh, I'm an experimentalist, so I do experiments. So the people that are employed, they do experiments. If they cannot go into the lab, they cannot do experiments, which means that they cannot deliver the working packages for the funder, which means that this is going to be the problem at the end of the project. So the main funder, like in UK, 
they have been taking a sort of pragmatic approach at the moment. So they will ca consider case by case uh, conditions. But in terms of research, what we will be probably need to do is like uh, we will be able to access the lab in a limited number uh, by keeping like safe distance and by wearing uh, appropriate PPE like uh, masks and uh, probably even lab coat. Uh, the fact that we don't know yet fully how the virus spread and how we can fight it that limit our uh, our able uh, our um, our capability to actually freely maneuver inside uh, the lab or inside any kind of environment what matters so until there will be a vaccine then uh, uh, we will still need to uh, face social distancing like in this respect so i think that the measurement that the currently the government is employed are uh, are reasonably good uh, the problem is like uh, will will we be able to stick to the rules so in uk they're quite good at it so if they say like don't do a thing so like the majority generally don't do but there are still people that do not follow the instruction and they just you know see the sun and they go outside so this needs to be avoided at all possible costs in order to not bonify everything that has been achieved so far yeah, also here, for instance, uh, we are, uh, as you were saying, like heat and uh, like hot weather could uh, slow down the uh, like contagiousness of the virus. Actually, here in Finland, there still there still would be a problem in the summer because we don't reach uh, generally like high temperatures even in the summer. Uh, we had snow a couple of weeks ago, even though this has been very very bad winter. But uh, um, so we are still expecting a probably like a probable other wave of of uh, uh, spreading of the virus. So we are not going to like completely, as, as Francesco was saying, uh, we're not going to completely like um, go back to like normal activities. And for instance, also we have all the uh, the, the teaching has been uh, has been uh, managed like remotely now. Also, like their experiences, new type of examinations for for um, like different exams and uh, um, as I was saying that like, we were going to have these shifts in the lab also like maintaining some uh, safety in the lab that is not it's not uh, um, it's not trivial because safety includes also being um, being there for other people in the lab and uh, um, be able to you know control these things it's not it's not trivial uh, but we are like implementing like we're changing things uh, every week trying to to find the best way to continue with research and um, without uh, affecting um, affecting it as much possible uh, as less as possible and uh, also funding bodies are going to um, I mean they're they are going to consider the instances of uh, postponing the fundings or uh, delaying uh, like maybe like start of the projects could be delayed because also here a lot of people are working on grant uh, on external grants so for that um, like it's a case by case situation and um, yeah, basically that that has been uh, so far what we are we're, we're doing. Yeah. Can I add something like on a positive thing? Let's say I, I wouldn't call it positive positive, but it's a sort of a positive way to look at the effect of COVID nineteen. And it's like I really saw um, an increase in about like uh, the resilience of people. So people like, and the general public is responding, uh, actually, sorry, not the general public, but let me be more specific, like at university, we're responding quite well. So things that like, I mean, from one day to another, you have to change everything, everything on a system that is entirely based on face-to-face -face admissions, uh, admission of students. So everything has been terrible, like uh, under this respect, but people are showing a resilience that is impressive. So in the, in one week, everything has been turned around. So all the teaching has been converted in on online. It is not an easy thing uh, for the for the assessment, like for the exam, it is not as easy as in Italy. But this, here, the exam is like very, very uh, strict. Like there are very strict rules. So this is actually seen as an opportunity to revise some of the existing methodology and some of really existing limitation that bureaucracy set respect to achieving uh, some targets. So resilience in this respect and uh, also resilience in research because we can understand that actually we can work from home so it's not should not be uh, like the fact that you have to go uh, in the lab to actually being able to do something this actually is you know is something that i'm experiencing more now 
uh, but that I, that I did not experience when I was in Japan, where actually people were staying in the lab. And if you were seeing uh, people like uh, sleeping is, uh, in, in the office, it's because they were so tired from working that much. So it's like completely opposite condition here instead there is more like a pragmatic approach of like you have to deliver you can do it everywhere you want just try to deliver uh, what you want to do and this is like another symptom of resilience that could help us to change our habits mm -hmm. it's good to hear something positive is coming from this uh, situation actually and uh, i was curious um on, on this note uh, um, about what you said also um, I guess you all have quite an international network apart from the people you are collaborating with in the place where you actually are at the moment because we were talking with Francesco before and he, he did his PhD in Italy, then he went to Japan, now he's in the UK. So um, all of you are um, have friends and previous colleagues that are probably in other places. What is the feeling, generally speaking? I mean, what do you feel that is mainly the feeling of the people is more of, um, I don't know, uh, they are unsure or they are more motivated to try and find new new ways to, to actually uh, make things work. Because even just the fact that many research groups are actually switching um, what they were previously doing towards new things that maybe had to be more specific on the COVID, um, resolution is is also interesting so that might give some uh, perspective instead of uh, uh, just um, you know issues and and, and uh, concerns yeah so okay so well the good things to be a researcher is that uh, in terms of researcher you have to face every time new challenges otherwise there is no point of doing any kind of research if there is not any bit of challenge. So this is a big challenge. And it's not only under a research point of view, uh, but also under an environmental point of view and uh, like a sort of uh, society on a society based level. So this is another way that uh, what I've seen, like from some people in the network, I mean, some people have not been affected at all in terms of research. Uh, some of my contacts, they uh, were basically doing simulations. So they were acting on clusters. So Basically, wherever you are, you access the cluster. Unless the clusters fail, you're fine. So you can go ahead with uh, your research. Some minor issues can be faced in terms of direct supervisions of people. And it's not something that you cannot uh, you know, deal online. For people instead that have to access the lab, well, uh, like in my case, we are trying to deal in a different way. So, well, this is the point, then the moment in which we can uh, focus on uh, writing grant. So, you know, it's something that we, we, we basically, we I mean, we should do more often, but now, you know, we can actually do it. It's the moment in which you can explore a new collaboration. So what about you had an idea and you never had the time to actually meet with the person? Well, now there is this time. So you can basically enlarge also your network for what matters. There are many people that are instead also, like in my network, they're starting to, you know, release webinars taking these kind of activities to share their research. So the good things of being a researcher is like having that malleability, like in terms of, uh, of mind and flexibility that allow us to face like new challenge in a different way. So people that uh, has something uh, that, you know, that can contribute to COVID-19 in all respects, they are trying to do that. People that cannot do that, they are trying to, uh, to do something else. Like some people, they're uh, focusing like more on the teaching side. Some other instead are saying, you know, this is the moment also to write a review paper. You know, is there like a topic that you would like to explore and there is not been a review on it? So let's write one or reading more literature. I mean, like, like you know, when you start to pile up all the, all the work, you really get sometimes very few time to read in your literature. You just have to go away in conferences to know what is going on that is new. Now we get the time to read. You know, and reading new research, reader, even research that is outside your, your field because you're curious and because you want to stimulate that curiosity, generate new ideas. Generating new ideas means that you can generate new collaborations and so on. So this is like a sort of, uh, uh, it's a sort of like we can focus uh, as long as you find right conditions on expanding what has been our uh, uh, research history so far. Yeah, I think Francesco really expressed the perfectly what I was thinking at the same time. So this is really the moment for being creative to like not just 
uh, been upset about the situation, but try to figure out solutions, uh, even that there could be far from our from our own uh, activities, research activities. So it's like the way the moment to, to think out of the box, and maybe like for instance, uh, I've been focusing on writing proposals, research proposals, and. Uh, and review papers <laughs> mostly so yeah that has been really like the, the the right time for concentrating on something that probably i wouldn't have at the, at the time so on the bright side there's something all right yeah so i i really thank you for this conversation today and uh, our time unfortunately is up and uh, so um i wish you all the best for uh your research and your and your work and um and thank you again for uh, for your insights today thank you very much for having us thank, thank you, you. Everybody. Nice to meet you. Yeah. it was very take nice care. to chat with you today yeah take care thank you bye 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 bye, bye. bye, -bye.